Okay, so now we're going to look at the development of the nervous system. We're going to focus mostly on the central nervous system, but we're going to talk a little bit about the development of the, of the peripheral nervous system as well. So to get the, uh, the nervous system is all coming from ectoderm. And what I showed you uh, previously was uh, the neural plate, which is the, on the dorsal surface of the embryo when it's about a blastocyst. And there are specialized cells. And these specialized cells be, form a plate, which then invaginates, and it becomes a groove, and then it, 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 becomes, it becomes a fold, a groove, and it, it eventually buds off and becomes a tube. And this tube is going to become the central nervous system. The tube closes, and then it ends up sinking beneath the skin. And there is uh, ectoderm and mesenchyme that comes in between the uh, skin and the neural tube. And that enables us to cover the central nervous system, the, the spinal cord and, and, uh, with muscle and bone and skin. Um, and it covers the, the uh, brain with bone and skin. So getting this neural tube closure is called, that's neuralation. It's, we're going to make a tube. And this making the tube is a process that is fraught with dangers. So we're going to go into it with, in some detail because uh, there can be problems with neural tube closure. I should note before we get started that this is taking place very early in gestation. It's taking place between day 21 and day 28 of human gestation. So that's the fourth week of, of gestation. Now, at that t point in time, most women do not know that they're pregnant. Okay, so it's very early. Now, let's take a look at how this works. Here's the neural plate. It's going to invaginate, and it's going to bud and close off, but it's going to do that first at one point, which is close to where the, the hindbrain meets the spinal cord. And from that point, it's going to zipper up in both directions. Later, there will be another closure point farther rostrally, and things will zipper up in, in both directions from both starting points. Now, in some instances, the entire zip up doesn't happen. And there is just simply, there, there's an open pore here, there's an open pore here, there's no closure of the tube. And this is called this word, which I'm not going to pretend to know how to pronounce. Um, but this is going to cause an, what's an embryonic lethality. This, this uh, fetus is going to abort um, pretty early on. More commonly, what happens is that one of these, uh, either the anterior neuropore or the posterior neuropore, doesn't close. Now, um, the one that closes first is the anterior, just because the, the start of the close is closer to the anterior nerve pore. This one closes first, and then the posterior nerve pore. The more, the, the more common uh, one to occur is uh, a failure of the posterior nerve pore to, to close, and this causes something called spina bifida. Now, spina bifida is a neural tube defect, and neural tube defects are suffi of sufficient um, sufficiently common, unfortunately, and of sufficient importance that it is commonly uh, abbreviated as NTDs. So it's a neural tube defect of the posterior nerve pore. It is always going to be uh, detrimental. It's always going to impair function. The degree of severity of the spina bifida depends on how much of this back end is left unzipped. Now, if, if, it's, if it's a little bit, uh, what often happens is that the person is going to need some kind of assistance for walking. They're going to have weakness or, or paralysis of the, of the legs. Um, but with increasing severity, what happens is that you can imagine the, the spinal cord is not tucked in. It's, it's externalized. 
And because it takes this longer route, it actually is going to pull down on the brain. Now, the spinal cord is attached to the brain. The brain's in the cranium. There's a hole at the bottom of the skull called the foramen magnum. If this spinal cord is taking too long and is really taut, it can pull on the brain. A piece of the cerebellum can come out or, or be very close to coming out of the uh, foramen magnum. This is called a, a Chiari malformation. And in fact, this can also produce a, um, a blockage in the flow of cerebral spinal fluid and produce hydrocephalus in, this, in, in an individual who's severely affected. That said, there are individuals that survive, the, uh, that survive uh, spina bifida and um, function well. Uh, here in uh, Chicago, we have a, a, an incredibly talented artist, Reva Lara, who has spina bifida. Um, she's uh, motorically uh, affected, adversely affected, but um, uh, artistically incredibly gifted. Um, and so she's a, a really nice example of a person who, uh, whose condition, whose neurological condition does not define uh, who she is. Now, there is, remember that after neurulation, there's still other stuff that has to happen. So this is the closing of the tube, and this is the part that goes wrong in spina bifida. But after neurulation, uh, the, the whole spinal cord dives down, gets covered in bone, muscle, and skin. Sometimes that covering, post-neurulation, is not complete. And that can cause a uh, condition known as spina bifida occulta. O-C-C-U-L-T-A, occulta. So spina bifida occulta is not uncommon. It's actually fairly common, but it is, it is not symptomatic. It is always discovered when somebody has, say, a, an X-ray or CT scan for some other reason. They, they have back pain or, or they have leg pain or whatever, and now you get the CT scan and you discover that the, the spinal cord's not completely accurately covered. There may be an open... Uh, bone in, in, in the um, vertebral column or a, a displacement of the muscles. But this is not symptomatic, it's not a problem, and it's also not a neural tube defect. It's post-neuralation. Okay. Um, now, back to a failure of the front anterior, front neuropore, or the anterior neuropore to, to close. That causes something called exencephaly. What it means is this front, it, so this is where the spinal cord's gonna develop, this is where the brain's gonna develop, and if the front neuropore doesn't close, then the brain is externalized. Then it goes into this post-neuralation process, which is eight out of the nine months of gestation, and all the, the milieu of the um, embryo eats at this brain, and it, essentially disintegrates so that by the time the individual is born with uh, ex ex encephaly, there is no more brain left. They have what's called anencephaly. They don't have a brain. And this is the neural tube de defect of the anterior neuropore. This is always lethal. It's not lethal. Um, it's often lethal during gestation. They don't come to term or they're stillborn or they live an hour and um, very few of them make it even to five days. Um, survival with this is not possible. Uh, this was used to be sometimes confused with microcephaly, which has, not, it, I don't think that is occurring anymore because microcephaly is on the rise due to Zika virus. Microcephaly is a, is a very different um, condition. These individuals with microcephaly have a brain, it's small. These individuals don't have a brain, and they do not live. Okay. Um, now, there are problems with that are also in the spina bifida occulta uh, type uh, of problem for the anterior neuropore. In other words, you can have the anterior neuropore close correctly, but the covering not occur correctly. 
And these come in a variety of, of styles. This is um, uh, an encephalo seal. And so here there's a brain. It's, it's, it's fine, but it wasn't covered correctly. It wasn't tucked into the cranium. It's in this outward cyst, this seal. Now, the, the prognosis of an individual such as this depends in large part on what's contained in this, in this outside sac. So if it's simply fluid, that can be drained, covered, tucked back in. But if there's actually brain in here, then that's a, a much more uh, difficult um, condition to survive. So what, what you see is we have neural tube defects, uh, spina bifida, and exencephaly that becomes anencephaly. Anencephaly is not survivable. Spina bifida is, is definitely survivable and comes in a variety of severities. Um, and then we have these post uh problems, which are, can be, again, from asymptomatic uh, to, to life-threatening. Uh, and now what we're going to do is going to look more at how this tube uh, develops into the central nervous system. Neural tube defects. Uh, were calm. It, 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 one of the most interesting things about neural tube defects that was discovered decades ago is that they have a, um, they're highly prevalent um, in people with different nutritional um, uh, situations. And so they, it, there, there seemed to be this link between nutrition and uh, neural tube defects. And this led people to think that it might be advantageous to, to uh, supplement pregnant women with folate. Folate is, is, a, um, is needed for uh, DNA uh, duplication. And so there's a lot of DNA duplication, obviously, that's needed to make all the cells of the nervous system. Uh, and, and whether that's the way it works or not is, is, is unclear. But what happened back in the, in, in the 60s even um, was that grains started to be uh, uh, supplemented by folate. So this happened in the United States, in Canada, in the Caribbean, um, and in a number of other countries. And so once there was uh, supplementation of, uh, of grains with folate, the number, the incidence of neural tube defects went way, way down. Um, this is done in a, in a way where women don't have to know that they're pregnant, because at four weeks, uh, uh, or three or four weeks of, of uh, gestation, they do not know that. Um, and there's no harm in people that aren't pregnant um, get, receiving excess folate. Of late, this has become a problem for two reasons. One is that gluten-free products are, for the most part, not uh, folate supplemented. And the second problem is that there are uh, a rising number of people in, in the United States um, and um, perhaps other places, who are no longer uh, uh, eating enough grains to, ha to get this folate. So the rise of, of neural tube defects is coming back again. Um, but this, is a, 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 this was, for a long time, a public health um, success story. Um, and and it, it feels uh, as a conquerable problem for the future to, to get folate to these underserved uh, communities that are seeing the rise in in neural tube defects again. So in the next, um, in the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, how we get peripheral neurons and central neurons and um, how, how these different types of cells are born. Mm -hmm.